hoffentlich noch mehr. Fragezeichen ist da oben gewesen. Gut. Eine Schriftrolle mit Fettflecken und hastig gekritzelten Hieroglyphen. Äh, Glyphen. Oh, lesen wir das. Eigentlich will ich das bei dem Spiel hier alles lesen, aber... Vorlesen ist halt nicht so meins. <lacht> Hm. Äh, diese Sonnenkriecher und ihre verdammte Diplomatie reden wir nicht um die heiße Schmiede herum. Es ist nur ein hübsches Karja-Wort, äh, das den Tenek bloß nicht auf die, äh, auf die Zehen treten bedeutet. Was sie auch nicht tun sollten. Sie haben allen Grund, diese Rohlinge zu fürchten. Aber ich gehöre nicht zu den Karja. Ich habe, mich immer wieder, ich habe nicht immer wieder versucht, den Westen zu erobern, nur weil mir danach war. Ich kann mit diesen Gesandtschaften nichts anfangen. Äh... Ja, nichts anfangen. Noch so ein hübsches Wort für wir schenken die weiße Fahne, bitte tötet uns nicht. Und jetzt sitze ich auch auf dieser Seite der Mauer fest, weil die Karja es einfach nicht, sein, äh, nicht, einfach nicht äh, lassen konnten. Oh Gott, wenn ich, wenn ich in mich reinrede, dann kann ich so schnell lesen. Aber sobald ich laut vorlese, höre ich mich immer nur selbst und das bringt mich so durcheinander. Ähm... Ja klar, es sind andere Zeiten. Sonnenkönig erwartet, glaubt an den friedlichen Dialog. Ja, schön für ihn. Aber einfacher Stöberer, Händler und Bastler wie äh, ich sitzen hier rum und drehen Däumchen, bis die Priester und Marschelle ihr kleines Kaffeekränzchen beendet haben. Oder was immer die da machen. Dann zu schweigen von unseren Brüdern und Schwestern auf der anderen Seite der Mauer. Wie sollen sie Hilfe und Vorräte bekommen, wenn das Tor geschlossen ist? Wie lange müssen wir noch herumhocken? Angeblich warten sie noch auf irgendeinen Sonnenpriester, aber... Waren diese Schwachköpfe nicht eigentlich die Wurzel allen Übels? Wir haben den verrückten Sonnenkönig doch erst angestarrt, den Westen anzugreifen. Das hier aufzuschreiben sollte mich eigentlich beruhigen, aber jetzt habe ich nur noch mehr Druck auf den Belgen. Je länger das Tor geschlossen bleibt, desto mehr Scherben verliere ich. Mir reicht's. Ich gehe nach Fahrlicht. Ich muss an irgendwem Dampf ablassen. Vielleicht bringt das ja was. Und los. Good news. Ich glaube, das war jetzt tatsächlich alles. Zu den beiden Orten. Oh, das sieht aber eine schöne große Stadt aus. Hard and shiny. I wonder if merchants would be interested. Um. Darf ich noch richtig? Ja. Machine. It must be a bristleback. It must be chain scrape. Jeruf said I could get my bow upgraded in there. I'd be able to tinker with my other gear too. Outlander approaching. That the savior? Wanna come in, savior? Welcome to Chainscrape, Savior. Open up, guys. Door of Servers. Good enough for me. By the Forge. Petra? Aloy. What are you doing here? About time there was something worth looking at in this dump. It's nice to see you too. And not a moment too soon. Come on. I... Damn brewery's the only thing I can count on in this place. <laughs> yeah, I heard. 
Machines, work stoppage. Oh, those are just the latest malfunctions. Chain scrape's always been a few tools short of a kit. <laughs> and right there is the biggest tool of all. Our land, not our problem. The bristlebacks are everybody's problem. Roland? You've heard of him. Yeah. But he's a story best told over a cold beer. Uh, Petra, Petra. I'm just passing through. I'm headed west. Oh. There's an embassy at, at Baron Light I need to make happen, and then I keep moving. Ah, of course. Bigger gears to grind. Well, Flame Hair, good to see you. Gotta move on. Petra. But if you want a cold beer and a few laughs with an old friend, come find me at the brewery. Your choice. Brauerei natürlich. Oh, this old one guy sounds like trouble. Maybe Petra could use some support. But first things first, I need to find that workbench and upgrade my bow. Das ist ein Jägerpunkt verbessern. Säurejägerpfeil. Perfekt. Äh, eine Munition, die Säureschaden verursacht, ist jetzt in deinem Inventar verfügbar. Scanne Gegner mit deinem Fokus, um herauszufinden, ob sie säureanfällig sind. Gegner mit Säure zu treffen, baut ihre, ihren Korrodierzustand auf. Sobald dieser Zustand aktiv ist, nimmt die Rüstung eines Gegners Schaden über Zeit und der Widerstand gegen Schaden ist geringer. Triff Säure kann es damit Säure feiern, um sie zu sprengen und eine große Elementexplosion auszulösen. Gucken, ob ich noch was anderes machen kann. Outfits. Das sind Gegenstände. Widerstand gegen Säure. Weiß man, was man noch an Fallenherstellung. Beutel Upgrades. Größerer Rohstoffbeutel. Wildschweinhaut. Muss ich also doch Wildschweine jagen. Was hier? Ist Sprengschleuder. Mehr. <lacht> Schaden. Dann nehme ich lieber mit dem. Ups. War gar nicht. Ups, ja. Nehmen wir das Outfit noch ein. Wildfleisch. Machen wir. Nicht genügend Platz in deinem Trankbeutel. Gut, Wildschweinhaut haben wir auch nicht. Dann hat sich das hier also erledigt. Das. Steuerung. Danke. 
dein Vorrat? Warum ist das hier gesperrt? Halt. Gut, dann ist das halt gesperrt. Oh, nicht vielleicht lesen sollen. Wir haben mal ganz viele Zweige. Frühsaft. Schienenmuskel. So viel Scharfschussbögen, Sprengschleuder. Ups. Och Mensch. Was mache ich denn hier? Ich wollte den Fahrrad auffüllen. Fahrrad öffnen. Muss ich, kann ich das jetzt machen? Schauen wir mal, was wir alles im Inventar haben. Oh, stopp. Ich möchte die gerne verkaufen. Ich muss da irgendwo ein Händler sein. Das hier kann ich auch noch nicht machen. Bergbank auch nicht. Muss doch irgendwo ein Händler sein. Lagerfeuer. Jetzt. Vorrat. Jäger. Bergbank. Kann ich anscheinend alles noch nicht machen. Ist aber sehr praktisch. Dann nochmal zurück, weil ich doof bin. To you. That damn mine is what happened to me. <clears throat> Won't be the last injury if Oven keeps shoving those tongs into those tunnels. What mine? Northeast the chain scrape, where the river ends. I told Corvin we should stop when the first cave-in happened, but <sighs> Oven probably threatened to cut off her pay. Or worse. How about you slow down and take me through it? You mentioned you were injured in a cave-in. Yeah, <clears throat> a couple days ago. That's how I hurt this blasted leg. <laughs> Corvin and the others were opening a new vein while I was checking on an older one. As soon as their blast hit, the tunnel I was in collapsed. Might have dodged it if I wasn't running on barely a spark of sleep. We were pushing too hard and too fast. And you're afraid Corvin and the others might not be as lucky if it happens again. Mm-hmm. Hit the nail right on the head. How come Olven's in charge? Don't these mines belong to the Karja? Try telling Olven that. He brought in all the back in to get him open. Might as well own them. <laughs> Fire and spit. You ask him. He owns us as well. Who's Corvind? He's our foreman. And a damn good one. The kind that knows how to deal with management when it gets unreasonable. But Olvind, <laughs> his demands go beyond unreasonable. Corvin's been doing his best to appease him. He even blamed himself for my injury when it was Olvind who ordered the extra shifts. Sounds like a good guy. That's why we all put up with the long hours and lousy conditions. But if the whole mine becomes unstable, I'd rather suffer Olvind's wrath than die buried in rubble. I could check in on your crew if I'm in the area. I would 
appreciate that. Thank you. Oops. Not again. Holen wir die anderen erstmal ab. Do you want, Albert? Some kind of payment? My dear magistrates, you think I can be bought? If you want that whistle blown, all you have to do is have your soldiers remove the bristlebacks and sign the concession decree. Face it, what other choice do you have? <coughs> Hi. Savior, what auspicious timing. Might we discuss a matter of importance to the Sundom? We might. Later. Very well. I shall be waiting. So, the savior herself. Walloper of Durval, gutter of youth. Uh, maybe. I've heard many tales of your beauty and heroics, my fierce lady warrior. Und das sind alle wahr. At your service. So, what could have dragged you away from the fine silks and wine of Meridian to this smudge of a settlement? Your saviorly attention must be needed elsewhere. I'm here for the embassy and... The embassy? Why, well, uh, by the forge. Ah. Greater gears for greater matters. Guess that means you'll be moving on. Once I've dealt with any problems around here that need my... saviorly attention. Ah, the Bristlebacks, of course. Tough to get rid of them if you want that embassy to take place. Well, best get to it, hey? And off you go. Not so fast. You don't seem to have a high opinion of the Magistrate. Well, I refuse to play nice to some fancy-robed parchment pusher when my fellow laborers are being bullied, intimidated, and taken advantage of. How noble of you. Noble? Ha! Born with a hammer in hand, I was. Nobody handed me anything or dropped opportunity into my lap. Everything I've achieved, I've done on my own. And where is this hammer now? The, uh, burden of leadership forced me to set it aside. The Karja risk nothing while demanding that good Osram gamble with their lives out there. Someone had to step up and say no more. You don't seem to have a high opinion of the Magistrate? Well, I refuse to play nice to some fancy-robed parchment pusher when my fellow laborers are being bullied, intimidated, and taken advantage of. How noble of you. Noble, ha! Born with a hammer in hand, I was. Nobody handed me anything or dropped opportunity into my lap. Everything I've achieved, I've done on my own. And where is this hammer now? The, uh, burden of leadership forced me to set it aside. The Karja risk nothing while demanding that good Osram gamble with their lives out there. Someone had to step up and say no more. You ordered the work stoppage? Indeed I did. We're laborers, not soldiers. Until the Karja clean up their mess and give us the fair deal we deserve, I'm not risking Osram lives. Fair deal? You mean your concession decree? <laughs> it's not my decree. It's on behalf of all the good Osram laborers of this land who do all the backbreaking work while only the Karja reap the rewards. All we're asking for is the ability to share in this prosperity for a land worked by the people for the people. Right. And just how much would be your share? Only an amount appropriate to my contributions to this community, uh, of course. <laughs> Is klar. 
If Chain Scrape is on Karja land, shouldn't a Karja be in charge? Who appointed you? The sensibilities of good Osram folk, of course. You think a Karja can head this whole venture? Ha! The Magistrate can barely make the trek from Baron Light without losing a few screws. So you have no real authority then? People only follow you because you say so. Loudly. Anyone who has followers has authority. I've been with Chain Scrape from the beginning. I mean, I'm practically its founder. And it's honest folk know I'm indispensable to its success. You said you founded Chain Scrape. Somehow I doubt that. Practically founded, I said. I alone saw its potential when it was just a smattering of tents in Baron Light's shadow. I invested in the mine. Alles klar, Bubble. Schlaf gut. Und vielen Dank fürs Lurken. You could say Chain Scrape is what it is thanks to me. Oh, so you're not just standing around and profiting off everyone else? Not at all. Sure, I make a little return on my investment here and there, but my main oh Gott, sechs Stunden priority, schon. as it was from the Good. beginning, is to look after the well-being of these honest, working Osram. Where's the whistle? Right in the middle of town, but with the threat out there, I'm not endangering innocent Osram lives. I'm going to clear out the bristlebacks. And when I'm done, this valley is going to get moving. If that's what it takes. Until then, I'll keep looking after the safety of these good folk. Just be ready to blow the whistle. Nein, wir holen uns noch eine Nebenquest ab. Let me see what that Karja Magistrate wants. Nein. I bet he's in the tavern. Seltsamer Schatten. What am I gonna do? Hey, Milda. Milda. I took some of your stew last time I went into the wild. Felt like I could have put a strider in a sleeper hole. Enjoy it while it lasts. Sounds like you're serving up some uh, impressive provisions here. <sighs> Not again. You can have the discount too, but you'll have to come back later. I think you have me confused with someone else. Oven didn't send you? No. Oh, my apologies. It's just that his minions won't stop pestering me. Now I've even worn out my special grip. Since I'm in the midst of a crisis, perhaps you could skip to what it is you wanted. Some of your food? Of course. Are Alvin's people causing you problems? Oh, yeah. They constantly demand my best, but the equipment I need to make my signature dishes isn't built for batch cooking. And don't get me started on the Olven discount they feel so entitled to. And if you refuse? I make meals, not trouble. How did you end up in Chainscape? Heard about a new and upcoming town at the edge of the frontier. Where there's a town, there's a tavern. I was in need of work. So I got myself out here and started cooking. Some of these people had never tasted proper boars and berries stew before. Anyway, next thing I knew, people kept coming back. Guess they like my food. More than ale. Your last customer mentioned your cooking really kept him going out in the wild. Where I'm headed, I could use some of that. I would be happy to oblige, especially since you have the decency to ask pleasantly. But? But my special groove griddle is no more. Without it, I can't cook any of my signature dishes. 
I hate to think what'll happen when I'm forced to refuse Olven or his goons. Even if I already had the right ingredients, there's nothing I can do. Unless you can source me a temporary replacement? What do you need? For the ingredients. A few pieces of decent wild meat, and I'd say a big handful of bitter leaf stems. That'll do. As for the griddle, a corrugated metal panel might suffice until I can have a new one forged. You'd likely find one in a scrounger pile if you follow the river to the northeast. Don't worry, I'll clean it first. <laughs> You'll have no issue finding boars and bitter leaf on your way. Assuming you're as much a hunter-gatherer as your clothing suggests. Thanks, Smildiff. I'll keep an eye out. So that's what gratitude sounds like. And don't let anyone push you around, okay? If you say so. Oops. So, dann schauen wir mal, wo die ganzen Nebenquests hinführen. Trag. Hoppala. Oh. Okay, dafür muss ich laufen. Aber erstmal, wo die anderen sind. Dafür. Ach, crap, ich komme immer mit den Tasten durcheinander. Ja, und ich bin mir ganz sicher, wenn ich da hingehe, dann darf ich noch viel, viel, viel weiter. Savior, <coughs> thank you for taking the time. And my condolences that you had to endure Olvan's bloviating. I've dealt with worse. It sounds like he's really trying to put you over the barrel. The idea that the Karja purposely let Bristlebacks into the dawn, it's... It's completely absurd. But the louder and longer he says it, the more support he'll get for his damned concession decree. How did the Bristlebacks get into the daunt? No one knows for sure. The first report of them came from west of the quarry. But unless they have wings I don't know about, I don't see how they could have come over the mountains. No other way in. The only way I know about is barren light. Look, if you can get to the bottom of this, I can offer a considerable bounty in return. Help me shut Olven up. What is this concession decree that Olvind wants? He wants the Sundom to designate portions of the Daunt as Osaram holdings. Only the portions, mind you, that produce any value. Let me guess. Because he stands to profit somehow? Exactly. With the Daunt under Osaram law, he could secure more investment for their numerous ventures. He can't get those investments without the concession? No. Not while there's a chance the Sundom could revoke their access. Hence, why the concession is so important to him. And why blaming the Karja for the Bristlebacks, no matter how absurd, works in his favor. How does blaming the Karja for the Bristlebacks help Olven get his concession? Look around. This may be the Sundom, but Chainscrape is all gears and rust and bad ale. Claiming that the Karja loosed the bristlebacks in order to intimidate Osaram laborers into obedience. Well, let's just say no one here has forgotten the atrocities of the mad Sun King. And with the bristlebacks bringing work in the valley to a halt, Alvant has plenty of time to pick at barely healed wounds. And if the Osaram refuse to work, unless the concession is signed, you won't have a choice. Correct. The reconstruction of Baron Light must continue. How did you get stuck out here? I asked for the posting, believe it or not. Overseeing the entire valley on behalf of the Sun King? It was an honor. Is an honor, I mean. But your job would be a lot easier without someone like Olvind blasting hot air all the time? Olvind's not going anywhere. He's been around longer than I have. 
Even fancies himself the founder of Chainscrape. <sighs> well, I'll find a way to live with him. I have to. You said the bristlebacks were first spotted west of the quarry? Yes, according to one terrified laborer, said the ground trembled before they came charging down the hillside. He took off and ran all the way here. Good place to start looking, then. If you learn the truth, maybe Ulvund will stop blaming the Karja for every problem under the sun, and maybe then he'll actually focus on rebuilding Baron Light instead. Oops. Suche westlich des Steinbruchs nach Dornrücken. Na gut, dann machen wir das jetzt. Ja. Oh, davon habe ich gelesen. You got any pieces? Spiel im Spiel. Well, aren't you in luck then? I got an extra set, a Tanakh original, straight out of the Forbidden West. Sit, 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 sit. I'll run you through it in a hot spark. I'll give you something special if you win it on my boards too. Ah, machen wir das. Ich meine, bei Witcher 3 macht Gwent ja auch Spaß. Es war viel Spaß. Manchmal. Und ganz ehrlich, manchmal. Ähm, Anfängerleitfaden. Anfängerset. Ja, machen wir. Let's start off simple. The Tanakh like to say that Machine Strike is a game of pure strategy. We each get a set of pieces. Each piece represents a kind of machine. And each machine is worth a different number of victory points. And to win the game, you'll need to gain seven victory points by destroying the opponent's machines. It can be tricky remembering the details of every machine, so okay. we use these notes to keep track of them. You see that number on the top right corner? That there is how many victory points you'll get for destroying that machine. Notes also tell you how far a piece can move, how powerful their attacks are, the, and of course, Hoppala. their health. Das habe ich das auch noch nicht gelesen, weil ich natürlich eine Taste gedrückt habe. Okay, that's enough for now. Let's just play. I'll explain the rest as we go. I own the board, so I get to choose who goes first. Since this is your first time, I'll let you go. Usually you get to choose which pieces to set on the board, but this will do for now. Pick up that machine piece to your right mm -hmm. and move it forward. And remember, each machine can only move a certain distance. Take a look at your notes if you need a reminder. Mhm. Mm mm. uh, zwei zu. Ich mache einfach zwei. Easy enough, huh? Now, you get to move two machines each round. So go ahead and pick a second machine. Move that machine forward. It's all part of the learning process. Just need to um, move that machine forward, Red. Okay. Okay. Also gut. Gotta gut. move that machine forward. Habe ich doch jetzt. Nee, habe ich nicht. Perfect. There's not much else to do for now, so just end your turn. Mm. We're forging onwards. Let me move. Jetzt bewegt er die nach vorne und kann mich direkt angreifen, oder? 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 Nein. And we're back to you. This time, why don't you try attacking one of my pieces? Try with that machine on your right first. Now move the piece close enough to attack one of my machines. When performing an attack, you'll be testing your machine's combat power against the opponent's. A machine's combat power is a combination of the terrain your machine is standing on and its own attack power. This board only has grassland terrain, which has no effect on a machine's combat power. 
and your current machine has two points of attack power. So in total, your machine's combat power equals two points. Since my machine isn't the one attacking, it has zero points of attack power. And just like your machine, it's not affected by grassland terrain. So right now, the difference in combat power between the two machines is two points. This means your machine can do two points of damage to my machine. Nicht gar nicht so kompliziert. Knew you were a smart one. Finish up by. Not pulling any punches, huh? Now grab that second machine of yours. See how your machine can't move close enough to attack mine? You can make your machine sprint. That lets it move one space further. Try it out. Downside to sprinting is that your machine can no longer attack. Now some players like to take a risk and overcharge their machine in cases like this. Overcharging lets you attack after a sprint, but it will damage your machine's health by two points. So use at your own discretion. Let's try doing that now so you can see what I mean. Yeah, but momentan bringt das nichts. That's about it for your turn then. Now, I'll let you in on a neat trick. That machine of yours, the one closest to me, grab a hold of it. Same as in the wilds. Machines have both armored points and weak points. Mm. You can see them marked on the pieces. Blue shows where their armor is thickest. Hit them there and you'll do some damage, but not a lot. Now, red shows the machine's weak points. Hit those and you'll deal a mighty blow. Here, let me show you. Rotate that piece so your machine faces mine. Oops. Ah, L2 and... Now let that machine have it. Off the board she goes, and there's your first victory points. You don't have seven of them yet, so let's keep going. Your machine attacked mine, but hasn't moved yet. Go ahead and move downwards towards my remit. You've already attacked a machine and moved your piece. But if you overcharge your machine, you can attack a couple. second time. And by the you'd be sacked, but sub overcharge. Yeah. So for some. Ain't that a thrill? Now, because your machine was knocked out at the same time as mine, we both get the victory points our machines are worth. Good news is, huh. since you're the one attacking, you're going to receive your victory points before I do. Which means you can reach the coveted seven victory. That's why sometimes losing a piece can be the best way to end a game in your favor. Das ist gar nicht so schlecht, das Spiel. Ich habe nicht quite up to 7 victory points this time. But you did destroy all my pieces. That means you're the winner. Yay. Was it so hard, was it? Just remember to always check for the best terrain to attack from. You'd be surprised the advantage you can gain over an opponent like that. I know it saved my behind in a game or two. I'll try and remember that. Oh, before I forget. <coughs> These are all my spare pieces. I want the Savior of Meridian to have them. It's a small set to be sure, but it should be enough to get you in on any strike games you find out there. You might even fancy looking out for them strike carvers. They've got all kinds of unique pieces that can turn a game in your favor. Though they'll need the right materials to craft you one. Or you might find them in the wilds if you're lucky. I know I've lost my fair share of pieces after all. Night of machine hunting or brew hopping. Oh, no need to thank me. Always a pleasure to help out new strike players. <laughs> Now, if you feel like playing a real game, I've got plenty of other boards. I could even teach you a few more tricks if you're up for it. Ja, da habe ich jetzt Bock drauf. Irgendwie schon. Thanks. Nein! Think about it. Wir weiterspielen. Wehe, die ist jetzt weg. Nein, ist nicht. Tra Terrain und Rückstoß tutorial. Ja. Ah, I knew I'd make a strike player out of you yet. How about this time I tell you how to use a board's terrain to your advantage? This one's got all the different terrains you can encounter in a game of strike. 
Knowing when and how to use them can mean the difference between victory and defeat. Terrain mainly affects your machine's combat power. As you know, when fighting an opponent's machine, you compare its combat power to yours. The higher your machine's combat power, the more damage you can do. So finding the right terrain is an essential strategy for overpowering your opponent. Here, I'll show you. Grab that piece to your left and move to attack my machines. Now let's take a look at your machine's combat power. Combat power is the sum of a machine's attack power and the value of the terrain it's standing on. Since your machine is attacking, it's using its two points of attack power. It's also standing on forest terrain with a value of one point. Add those together and your machine has three points of combat power. Hmm. My machine is standing on grassland terrain with a value of zero points. It's also not attacking, which means their attack points aren't in play. So my combat power is zero. This means your machine can do three points of damage. Go ahead and test it out. There you go. Now, choosing the right terrain doesn't just improve your offense. It can also help defend your machines from attack. Grab your other piece and place it in front of my second machine. Since your machine is attacking, it's using its two points of attack power. It's standing on grassland terrain. This terrain has a value of zero. This means your machine's combat power adds up to two points. My machine can't use their attack power since they're defending their position. But they have the higher ground. They're standing on forest terrain, which is worth one point. This means my combat power adds up to one point. Now. The front of my machine is colored blue. This means that the spot you're about to attack has armor protecting it. Which means my machine gets an extra point, giving it a total of two combat power points. If we compare the combat power of both machines, you'll see that you won't be able to do any damage. Whenever you're unable to top an opponent's combat power, you can still choose to attack and break their machine's defenses instead. Go ahead, try it out and see what happens. Ha, see? When you break a machine's defenses, you can knock it backwards. Mm. Sure, both our machines will receive one point of damage, but knocking my machine off that terrain makes it more vulnerable to attacks. Not only that, if my machine had been blocked from moving backwards, it would have received an extra point of damage. And if my machine had been blocked by another one of my pieces, that machine would have received damage as well. That's why breaking a machine's defenses is a great way to deal damage to several pieces at once. Useful, right? Okay, now go ahead and end your turn. There's still one more thing I want to show you. All right, as we've seen, the higher the terrain, the more it'll add to your machine's combat power. However, there are two other terrains that work a little differently. This is what we call a chasm. Only flying machines can be placed on those. But it'll take away two combat points if you do, so be wary. This is marsh terrain. Landing on it will take away one combat power point from most machines. It'll also keep your machine from moving for the rest of the turn. Here, let me show you. Grab that machine on your left. See? All you can do now is wait for your next turn to move again. Or you can overcharge your machine to get out of there. You can still attack any nearby enemy so you're not completely helpless. Well, I think that's enough yammering from me for now. Promise it'll all come in handy next time you play. Spiel wird echt komplex. Also wirklich komplex. Tutorial, Maschinenarten und Fertigkeiten.
Yeah. Here for more tips? Why don't I tell you a bit more about the pieces we used to play? In a normal game, you get to choose which machines you place on the board. Each one is worth a certain number of setup points, and you can spend up to 10 assembling your army. Hmm. Knowing what each machine brings to the game and building an army that matches your strategy is the key to becoming a machine strike master. When assembling your army, there are a few things to keep in mind. First and foremost, you can never have more than four of the same machine on the board at the same time. With that in mind, most players will choose machines based on how far they can move or how much attack power they have. But a real strike player will be looking at a machine's type and skills. Let's take a quick look, shall we? Pick up that machine on your left. All right, let's talk about the different ways in which a machine attacks its opponents. In other words, its machine type. If you look at your notes, you'll see this machine here is a melee type. You can also tell by the shape of the base the piece stands on. A melee type machine attacks the first enemy within range and no one else. We've seen this plenty of times, so just move that piece forward so I can show you some more stuff. Great, now grab your other machine. Looks like we've got ourselves a gunner type machine here. This means they'll only hit the farthest enemy in their attack range. Oh. Let's move that machine forward and end your turn so we can take a look at the rest of the pieces. Let's go with this piece first. This is a ram type machine. Attack an enemy with it, and it'll push the piece backwards. Like this. See, now my machine has taken over your machine spot on the board. This is a great way to take the advantage away from your opponent if they have the higher ground. Looks like we have one more piece to look at. Oh, now this is a beauty of a piece. A dash type machine. When it attacks, it'll <laughs> move to the end of its attack range and damage every machine in its path, including your own. So make sure you take a good look at the board before you send it off to the races. You should also make sure it's able to finish its attack on an empty spot. Otherwise, you won't be able to attack at all. Here, I'll show you. Look, it even rotated your piece a nifty little piece you'll definitely want in your set. If you look at your notes, you'll notice this particular machine has one of the skills I mentioned before. There's quite a few of those, and we haven't even looked at all the machine types yet. But I'm pretty sure you've got more important things to do, so I made you a list. It's got all the tips and tricks we talked about, too. I think that about does it for now, so if you want to play a real game, just let me know. Yeah, I'd spamish. Oh, oh, werde ich müde. Let's play. You're up, Red. It's blöd, was ich gemacht habe. Echt blöd. Ja, genau das mit dem Feedback, das war sehr blöd. Ah, down to one piece. I might win this thing. Ja, kannst du tatsächlich.
kann ich meine Runde einfach beenden. Ausschau auswählen, überladen, aus. That was brutal. to make my move. That's it for me. Oh, I thought I had that one. Lief gar nicht so schlecht. Ich mach mal noch das andere. This yep. is going to be fun. Oh. Ramtyp, Ramtyp, Nahkampf, Nahkampf. My turn. Board's all yours. It's all yours. done now. My turn. You're up, Red. You're just hammering down on my pieces now. One less piece on the board. Okay, let's see. Ah, 
knocked right off the board. Just one piece left. That sure dampens the forge. Can I get some? Time yeah. to get serious. Oh god. Your move, Red. Now that was a game. Even oh. if I lost. Jetzt war jetzt aber Schluss damit. Nicht Schluss, der Bitch. Don't be a stranger. Das Spiel macht Spaß. Knew you couldn't resist some good company. Come for that beer after all, eh? Here, sit down. Get a pint in her hand. Wasn't expecting you to swing by. Since when do I do what's expected? <laughs> There's that spark. Fire and spit. Uh, fire and spit. Mmm, lecker. Fire and spit. That's a blast from the bellows. Won't fix the forge, but at least I can forget about my troubles for a while. Like what? Take your pick. We got bodies to bury from the bristlebacks, the work stoppage, Olven grating the gears about his concession decree. Hey! Weapons off the table! Ah. Don't listen to me. More than a cold brew and knocking some heads together can't fix eventually. <laughs> so the bristlebacks in the daunt. Forest. <sighs> Where did they come from? That's the thing. No one rightly knows. They just showed up one day, rampaging around the valley like they exploded out of a forge. Lost some good people. But I heard talk of some vanguards trying to take them down. Did they come through here? Stopped by briefly for supplies. Olvind was none too pleased. Won't be able to crank it to his advantage once the bristlebacks are gone. But how could bristlebacks and the daunt help Olvind? Two words. Concession decree. Since no one knows where the bristlebacks came from, Olvind has taken to blaming the Karja for him. He's hoping to dig up enough old resentments to get a strike going until the concession's signed. This is just his latest attempt. He's been trying to rile up the workers since the day he rolled into town. And people actually believe him? Lots of folks suffered at the hands of the Mad King during the Red Raids. Give him half a reason, they'll blame the Karja for anything. <sighs> Damn Karja slavers. I thought you'd be back in Freeheap. Well, after the big battle at Meridian, I went back. But realized it was running smooth. Didn't need me. Heard about the rebuilding out at Baron Light. Figured they could use another hammer. Been scraping by ever since. You could always leave. And go back east? Nah. I ain't one to leave a lit forge. Besides, someone's gotta be a squeaky wheel for the workers around here. So about Olvind. Around here, everything's about Olvind. How'd he end up in charge? He got here early, like a squirrel smelling a fat nut. He knew rebuilding barren light would need stone and timber. So he jangled purses all over Mainspring, getting investors to front claims on anything in the Daunt that might be worth a damn. Thing is, all the bankers back home know that this is Karja land, and the Sun King can revoke those claims at any time. That's why he's desperate for the Magistrate to sign off on a concession decree. This concession decree, what is it exactly? And how would it help Olvind? It's pig diddle, that's what. A writ that would put all Osram claims in the Daunt under Osram law, even though they're on Karja land. 
It would mean that any existing ore, stone, and timber claims couldn't be revoked by the Karja. No more risk, no more hesitation for investors back in the claim to pour in the shards and expand their business. And since Ovind has a stake in all those claims, it would make him richer than a scrapper in a junk heap. Not to mention Chainscrape would become an Osra municipality, so he could buy enough votes to call himself an elder man. He's a sly old badger, I'll give him that. Figures if he keeps up the pressure, eventually the magistrate will sign. Well, I, uh, I have to be going. Thanks for the drink, Petra. I'm glad I stopped by. Anytime, Flame Hair. Flame Hair. Oh, man, schicker Kose Name. Alles soweit weg.